my sister gets me the best shirts ever. Hey everyone, Paradox here. Welcome to vlog number four, I think it is now. I'm not too sure, I can't really keep track. Uh, the next vlog, how's everyone doing? So, I had a really fun week. Uh, it's almost been carrying over since, I think about two weeks now. I've been playing Dota, Dota 2, a uh, computer game, since I think 2013, 2012, uh, a few years ago. Um, I'm not the best player, I'm a pretty average, mediocre player, but I got a new mouse, a Steel Series um, Elite? No, I think Wireless Sensei. There we go, that's the one. Steel Series Wireless Sensei. And my old mouse, which was a rat. Uh, an MMO cyborg rat mouse. That one had like 15 different buttons on the side of the mouse, like over here. So I was so used to having all my different hotkeys and everything queued up and everything. But now with the new mouse, I didn't have that. So playing Dota was really, really challenging for me. Uh, it's a pretty mechanically difficult game. So I decided, okay, well, I'll take a break from Dota for a while and I'll play League of Legends. I have a lot of friends that play League, so what the heck, right? Oh man, it is so much fun. Uh, I really, really enjoy it. I, I used to hate League um, as a Dota elite snob, uh, but ever since they updated their engine, ever since they revamped a lot of the stuff, uh, I've pretty much been neutral towards the game, and now I can say that uh, it's, a, it's a pretty fun game. And I did it. I finally beat Rise of the Tomb Raider. It was a phenomenal game. From start to finish, the whole game was just mind-bogglingly fun they improved on almost every single aspect from the first game and the ending was really good the ending set up the sequel really really well and from what i've read online square enix accidentally revealed that the third game in the reboot series is already in, in production so we'll have it hopefully in a year or two fingers crossed i'm really hoping so with that game done i'm going to move on to unravel i've already started recording a few episodes I've been obsessing over the thumbnail. I, I can't quite get the right color for the font and getting the right imaging and everything. Because for me, the thumbnail is one of my favorite parts of doing this whole channel. I really, really enjoy it. So I'm going to keep working on the, the thumbnails for now and slowly, slowly bring in Unravel as a series. And next week, in four days, Dark Souls 3 comes out. That... Oh man, I've been waiting for Dark Souls 3 for like forever, pretty much since Dark Souls 1, almost. We knew there was going to be at least three games, there's no way. After Demon's Souls, the game, the series was so successful, why wouldn't they make more money? It's already been getting really, really good reviews so far. IGN gave it a 9.5, not that IGN is the most credible website these days. So Dark Souls 3, I'm, I'm still on the fence of whether I want to stream it or if I want to record it like I've been doing with other games traditionally, just uh, blind playthroughs and then cutting it up into episodes. If I do the streaming, I, I could honestly do both really. It would just be a, a bit more work and I might not be able to finish Unravel or do it at the same time. So actually here's an idea. What if, what if I try, okay. If I do Dark Souls 3, the first few days I stream it, just for fun, just to test things out. And then I have all that uh, footage. I can edit that down to a few episodes. And from there, during that time, I can also play Unravel through to completion. Hopefully it's not that long of a game. And I'll have that whole series done. And then I can come back and stream Dark Souls 3 and that way I'll have the time to have Unravel up and done. I don't have to worry about recording, editing, and uploading that. I can just focus solely on Dark Souls 3 because I'm expecting to die a lot. So a few days ago, I was walking home. I'd stopped by a store to get some candy. Uh, it's a local, uh, what do you call it? It's like a, a small little mom and pop shop of sorts. Super small, local, or organic, vegan, everything kind of candy. It's, it's a very high-end candy shop, but they make really good stuff. It's called Squish. There's a little bag that the the candies come in. It was really yummy. And on the way home, I saw a homeless guy and their dog. And, you know, they, they looked understandably pretty hungry. So I had time to kill. I mean, I, I was just going to go to the comic book store and get some more comics because the ones from last week did not last me nearly long enough as I'd wanted to. Just 
plot right through them. They're all really, really good. Especially Gotham Academy. I really like that story. It's a fun twist on DC Universe, and it's cool to have a really unique story set in that whole universe, but still just separate enough that it feels like its own entity. Anyways, so I was just heading there. I The afternoon was free for me. So I just stopped and I asked, uh, asked them if they had any food, if they were hungry. Um, I, you know, I was, it was downtown. There were plenty of places I could get some food, right? So the guy, David, he says, oh, you know, there's a vet store uh, just a block over. And the lady there, is, she has food for my dog, Diamond. If you could pick it up, that'd be really appreciated. So I said, okay, sure, what the heck. At first, I, just, I had a hard time believing him because, you know, vet food's not the cheapest thing in the world, right? How How is this guy affording vet food? So I go to the vet store and I pick it up. Uh, it was it was lamb flavored dog food. It was special dog food for Diamond because she had surgery that removed parts of her stomach. Um, and I think other parts, most of the stomach from what I remember. Anyway, so I, I, I pick up the food, whatever. That, that was my budget for the day. So I didn't pick up the comic books. But it felt nice. So I go back and I sit down with him because uh, you know, I want to I wanna talk to him a little bit. Um, the dog was cute. I like Diamond. Really nice dog. And I give the food to them. Uh, it, it was nice. They, 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 were, they were really happy. Diamond, Diamond was a little shy. So I start talking to the guy. We introduce ourselves. And... I, I didn't I didn't pry too too much into his personal life. Uh, the lady at the vet told me that he had been on the streets for a year and a half or so, but he'd been coming there for about four years. So it was relatively recent that he was on the street. And I'm not telling this just to make me seem like a cool guy because there's actually a, a, a moral to this story. Um, so I sat down with him. I, we were talking for a bit. Uh, it was really cool to get to know him. Uh, he. He had this great energy about him. Uh, he was like 55 years old. Uh, it was super nice. So he told me that there's a lot of homeless people that take advantage of other people's kindness, like mine. And if you give them, if you buy food for their animals, they'll actually resell it for drug money. So he gave me some advice, and this I want to pass on to all of you guys, is if ever you want to buy food for a homeless person, uh, for, for their animal, open it first. Because if you open it, they can't resell it and they're kind of, they're forced to give it to the animal that, that needs it. So those kinds of things were, it was really nice to hear. Um, it was good to know as well. Because, uh, you know, everyone, I'm sure most people have the, have that experience of giving someone, uh, someone some food, homeless guy, and they just snap at you and they go crazy because, you know, they don't want food, they want money so they can go get drugs. And it's sad, but that's the reality of things. So, um, for next time, if if ever there's a vet store nearby, uh, just keep that in mind. So open it up and give it to them. Last weekend, I was up north at my parents' house. They live in a small chalet in Saint Adele, and my my three cats live there: Dante, Chanel, and Mr. Miyagi. Dante's my cat. You know, he's the the, the big fluffy black cat. And there's Chanel, my mom's cat, and Mr. Miyagi who is my dad's cat. He he is such a weird cat. My sister and I call him an alien because he just, he's really creepy. He has his eyes, like he, he rarely blinks. He just stares right at you into your soul. And his eyes are rarely, rarely uh, dilated. They're always constricted. And he just looks like a snake. And when he goes outside, because he's an outdoor cat, he kind of slithers on the ground like a snake. It's really, really weird, but pretty entertaining. So it's great to see them. And... I slowly brought up the idea that I want to adopt a cat for myself, for my place here. And I think they're a little open to it. The cat cafe that I mentioned before, they it's it doubles as a shelter. So they have a lot of cats for sale. And I have, I was telling this to my friend Jenny. I told her, oh, uh, what are your plans for the weekend? She goes, oh, I'm doing this and that. The other. What about you? And I said, oh, well. I have an appointment to meet a cat at 3 p.m. on Sunday. And in my head, it makes perfect sense. But she's like, uh, oh, well, you're crazy. But no, it's, uh, I'm meeting one of the owners there to play with the cat, Kiyoshi, one of the cats that I really want to meet. 
looked super nice and friendly. He was the cat that stole my water the first time I went there. I actually filmed it. I'll see if I can include it here. Although I filmed it in portrait mode, not landscape mode, so it's gonna look a little weird. But whatever details. So hopefully I can get a, a, a I can adopt a cat. I'd be really happy to have one. Would I let him outside though? Uh, I'm not sure. I have to speak with them because I don't know if Kyoshi is an outdoor cat. If if I bring him up north to visit, then yeah, I'll definitely let him out there. But in the city, it's uh, I'm always scared. And also, I live in an apartment building, so it's a little bit more difficult to have an outdoors cat, I find. Well, granted, I do live in a basement, so I could always just open the door and let him jump in. And this weekend, I am hopefully going to Korean barbecue with some friends tomorrow. I'm really excited. There's a restaurant downtown called Sol Chaco, which is absolutely delicious. If you don't know what Korean barbecue is, you go to a restaurant, and they you sit down at a table, and they have this grill right in the middle of the table, and they give you all the food raw almost all the food, most of the food's raw, and you just, you put it on the grill yourself and you cook it. And it's, it, it is so delicious to have all these different meats and vegetables that you cook on the grill and you, everyone just orders their own thing and it's pretty much all you can eat. It's expensive, but if you're pretty hungry, it's, it's, it's really fun. Like you don't really mind the price because the experience is really fun. It's a nice restaurant, it's very friendly. They have good beer. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited for that. Hopefully we can play some board games after that. I, I've, it's been a while since I actually saw my friends. We've been playing games online for a while, but uh, we've all been pretty busy. And it'd be nice to actually sit down and just catch up afterwards when we're so full that we can't even move. And then hopefully, hopefully for once in my life, I can win a game of Cthulhu Wars with my friends. I can beat my sister, always. My family, I always win. But against my friends, mm. Nope, never. And after that, tomorrow night, yeah, tomorrow night I'm recording one episode for sure of the podcast slash talk show. I'm still not sure what I want to do. And I've done my research into how to actually make it a real podcast that's audio only because the first, the only episode so far has been, it, it's audio, and there, but there's a video. There's still like a muted video, so you can't really just listen to it on the way to work unless you leave your YouTube app open on the phone, which drains the battery. So I'm going, I, I've converted to audio. I just got to set up the RSS feed with iTunes and just figure that out, run some tests. Uh, hopefully I can get that done by next week. So I'm recording one episode. Uh, I'll announce the guests on, on the podcast. Uh, it'll be fun. It'll be a nice surprise. And maybe I'll do another one with Darman, with Damien, on Destiny. Because I have mentioned this before, but Destiny's got a new update coming out next week as well with some new content, new missions, new items, new everything. So him and I love that game so much. And it'd be really great to have someone to actually talk to and just like gush and rave over it. Because I have friends that play Destiny, but no one loved it quite like I did. No one was obsessed with the lore like I was. No one... Ah, uh, yeah, they just weren't as passionate about the game as I was. Mostly because my friend Mark, he's the one who got me into the game. He convinced me to buy it, and he had been following the game pretty much since it was announced, and he was one of the people that was so disappointed at launch. He was the one who was like, he finished the game, he's like, what, that's it? This is the whole game? This is bullshit! So he was really upset, but me, I had no expectations. I actually don't know how. I never heard about the game or just didn't know that much about it. I like to follow big games pretty closely, just out of sheer curiosity, and that kind of game would have interested me. I just, I don't know, slipped under my radar somehow. So... For me, it was a pleasant surprise. I had no expectations, so I couldn't get let down, right? And then when they released the Taken King, I was just drawn back in right away. So it's nice to have another excuse to dive back in. There's a lot of people on the internet that are so frustrated with Bungie. They're always like, oh my god, Bungie, this game's gonna fail, you don't have enough content, blah blah blah. Me, I'm just happy to play the game up until I have done everything I want to and everything I can, and then after that, take a break, go play another game, because you know there's more than one game out in the market, right? but some people want to be haters. And speaking of haters, oh my god, are there a lot of them in League of Legends? I thought Dota was bad, but it's in Dota, the servers aren't region locked, so anyone from around the world can play on any server. So we have a lot of South Americans that would play on the American servers, and they don't always speak English, so it can be very, very frustrating. So when you play Dota, a lot of times you lose a game, sometimes because bad teamwork, bad communication, bad plays, but yeah, communication is usually the big one because if you can't speak the same language, oh, it's so hard. But in League, 
uh, League has a surrender option. Like you can actually surrender after 20 minutes of a match. And there are some people that if they die once in the game, they, they're just, they're done. They're AFK, which means they're away from their keyboard. They stop playing the game and they just screw the whole team over. Oh, it's ridiculous. I don't understand. I get very bitter. I get very frustrated with games. My friends uh, put up with me admirably, luckily. Actually, let me know. I I'd be re I'd be down to record some league footage of <laughs> my my noobish adventures in League of Legends. So if you want to see that, let me know in the comments. I would I would love to record a few games, um, share with you guys. I mean, we we have a lot of fun. My friends are super friendly. They're really really chill. Yeah, it'd be pretty fun. So that's about my week. It's it's been it's been really fun. Uh, I am really excited to meet Kyoshi. Hopefully, I can adopt a cat. It'd be nice. Rise of the Tomb Raider, I, I, I just beat it like a couple hours ago. Super great game, and the final episode's up tomorrow. Unravel is beautiful so far. I've only played a couple levels, but it's, 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 it reminds me of Ori and the Blind Forest in that the, the levels, they're very evocative in, in, in what they show. The, the scenery, it, it really evokes certain emotions in you, and I'll talk more about it in the actual Let's Play. But yeah, Ori, like, they're very emotional games, which I like. So hope to uh, hope you guys enjoy that as well. And yeah, I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.